Hello folks, I just got some news. Um, I'd like to comment on the state of the police here in America, otherwise known as the police state. Um, I know there's a lot of good cops out there, probably 99% of them. I have police officers in my family. I have military in my family. Um, my cousin is a police officer and I have often talked to him, spoken to him, about the job and how he sees it as he's actually protecting the community by enforcing the law. You know, he, he seems to, you know, to actually believe in the job that he's doing and I, and I admire that. And I've heard many a police officer who, there was a police officer who drowned one time trying to save a person who had fallen into, uh, you know, a, a, a pond or something like that in one of our parks. This was a few years back. He was a park a park ranger or a park policeman who put his own life in danger to try to help another person. And, and you know, there are police officers who respond to domestic abuse cases and, and have to use force to put down somebody who is attacking another human being. Um, they have to use force to stop, you know, bank robberies, to stop robberies of all kinds and just criminal activity of all time, of all kinds, in order to restore order and protect the community at large. I understand these. Those are not the cops that I'm talking about right now. The cops that I'm talking about right now are those who use excessive force as a knee-jerk reaction to any situation that they feel, you know, that they don't understand. So, you know, if, if you know, if all else fails, just beat the crap out of it. You know, <clears throat> we've all heard of these cases. Um, what I'm about to say should should have, you know, the story that you guys are familiar with, where Pima County Sheriff's officers open count, open fired on on a on a military veteran who had just come back from his second tour in Iraq, and he was in his house with his wife, and somebody somewhere said that this guy was dealing drugs or something. And they got a warrant. They stormed this guy's house. First of all, they sent a tactically geared SWAT team to storm this guy's house. There was like 60 shots fired. He, the guy, the guy, you know, his wife, the guy, the Marine, the, the person, the former Marine, the, the citizen. Um, his wife alerts him that someone's outside. They have guns. He grabs his firearm. And you know, in an attempt to defend his home from what he thinks is a home invasion, he gets shot something like 50 or 60 times, something ridiculous like that. It's fucking sad. It's fucking sad. And, and you know, a guy comes home from serving his country out of a sense of duty only to be killed by his own country. The police officers from his own country. That's just ridiculous. The guy, the, the Marine's name that was killed is Jose Garena. And, uh, a decorated military veteran you know he, he had a house he had a wife he had gotten himself a job he even had a kid and he was trying to continue on with his life and live the American dream and he gets gunned down in his own home for doing what he thought was best to defend his home now the police thought that they you know the police originally said that he had fired a shot but then they found his weapon and it was still on safety this man was, the, the firearm in question was an AR-15 that, that he had purchased legally, and if he'd wanted to kill one or more of those officers, being a, a military veteran, a, a trained military veteran, he could have, but he didn't. Okay? And then, you know, when it came out that the police were lying about him firing a shot, and they filed police reports that didn't quite match up, um, they buried those police reports. They buried them and uh, they buried all the affidavits that corresponded with that case. They buried the original warrant. They, they had it sealed by a judge. They had it sealed by a judge so that the, the media and the people could not access it and prove that what the police did was wrong. Now that's corruption. That's official corruption, in my in my opinion. There's no other way that I can put it. Um, now we've got a case where a mentally handicapped person was pulled over by the police, and because the officer thought he was smarting off, he gets handcuffed, he gets tased, he gets hogtied and treated like an animal because he was mentally handicapped. 
His mother tried to explain to the officers that he was mentally handicapped and had a speech impediment. His neighbor tried to explain. They were all threatened with arrest. All of them. I'm going to put a link down here of some cases of, of, the, uh, of what I'm talking about and the situation that I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a link to the Jose Garena you know, case where he was um, gunned down in his own home. And the thing that pisses me off about that Jose Garena thing, I mean, the whole thing pisses me off, but the, the, the real travesty of it is that he was denied medical attention while the officers carried out the search, and he basically bled out and died. Because the, the, the EMS arrived and said, we're trying to render aid. He said, no, you're interfering with a police investigation. Stand back. And they allowed a man to die. Serve and protect officers. You police officers out there, serve and protect is the motto that I see written across police officers everywhere. Serve and protect. Not punish and enslave. All right. Now, I know there's a lot of good cops out there who would not participate in such things. It's things that we saw in New Orleans where 70-year-old women were beaten in their own homes and they had their weapons removed and their rights violated in every way possible. I know a lot of you guys would not do that. But to those of you who, who would, you know, we're the law, we're the police. I've heard police officers say that. I've seen, I witnessed them saying that. We're, we're the police and we're in charge and you got to do what we say. What happened to your oath? What happened to support and defend the Constitution to protect the community of which you are a part? What happened to that part of the oath? There's no excuse for this. There's really no excuse for this. May God have mercy on your soul for abusing your own people. All right, links are down below. Jose Garena and the other gentleman whose name escapes me, uh, the, the mentally handicapped uh, person. Um, this is just, this, this cannot stand. Police officers, if you do not like the animosity that is brewing amongst the people towards you, fix it. Change it. Change it from within. Start acting respectable, like respectable pillars of the community that you should be. Start acting like it. All right, it's, you know, for a long time I wanted to go into criminal justice, you know, be a police officer, and I, I still am, am milling it over. The academy which I will be attending starts in October, and I have to, and I've got the money to pay for it. And I've got the money to do what I got to do. And I'm, you know, physically able, able-bodied. I, you know, I meet all the physical requirements and everything like that. But I'm still, still haven't made up my mind yet because of shit like this. Because of shit like this, I have not made up my mind just yet. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. Anyways, the links are going to be down below. And God help us, man, this is getting way out of control.